<laughs> Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this Google Product Manager mock interview. My name is Mark, and I used to be a senior product manager at Google for quite a few years. Today, I'll be playing the role of interviewer, and my candidate is Akshat. Hey, everyone. I'm Akshat. I also used to be a product manager at Google, where I worked on Google Stadia and Messages. Awesome. Thanks, Akshat. So for this Google Mock interview, I'll be asking Akshat five very common behavioral questions. Akshat, you ready to get started? Let's do it. OK. First question, tell me about yourself. Great question. If I were to describe myself, I would say I'm a builder at heart. Um, I've always been drawn towards building and tinkering with things. Um, you know, some examples I can think about are in middle and high school, spending sort of all my time uh, in our robotics shed, messing around with woodworking equipment and, uh, you know, putting together little robots. Um, I once made this small little gadget that lets me listen to music in the shower, you know, a sleeve that I can slip my iPhone into and a little sound box that it'll play music from. Um, to like little games that I've built for myself, like a, TD, a 3D Tetris game. And for me, that sort of builder culture is sort of ever present at Google. And uh, that's what makes me really excited to, to work there and just be in an environment where that's celebrated. Yeah, that's cool. I can, I can resonate with that. I know a lot of my colleagues love to build things uh, even when they're not in the office. So I really liked Akshat's answer here. And the reason is, is that he focused on um, not his uh, academic credentials. He didn't focus on his professional credentials, but instead he went something to his childhood. Um, so he talked about being a builder. He talked about being a tinkerer. He talked about building robotics. Um, and then he actually brought in specifics. So things like the ability to build little games and things like this. So you can imagine as a child, these things would thread through his career and kind of made the DNA of Akshat, but he didn't have to set himself apart with his academic or professional credentials. So I really like this answer. Okay, so why do you want to work at Google? I think there's a couple of things that are unique to Google that um, are really attractive for me as I think about my, the next step in my career. The first thing is really um, about how Google builds for, an, for a global audience. Um, there's very few companies where the work that you're doing really impacts everyone all over the world. And I think that presents unique challenges for a product manager as you think about who your customer is, who your user is. Um, I think product managers at Google really have to build for um, people with all sorts of different circumstances and constraints, whether that's differing levels of internet connectivity, you know, different kinds of languages and scripts, left to right, right to left, um, you know, different kinds of worldviews and, and assumptions. And I think that is a unique challenge that one grows a lot from working on. Um, the second thing is building for scale. I think at Google scale, you know, there's really no such thing as an edge case. And that really impacts how you think about product development, how you think about launching new products, um, and just the, the, the thought of the, a new feature you launch touching so many different people uh, is both really exciting, but um, also daunting, and I think a great learning experience. And then finally, I think Google is a company that works on really hard problems. And I think in some ways, Google has the luxury of working on really hard problems where other companies you know, they, they don't. Um, for Google, nothing is too expensive. And I think um, the opportunity to work on really unique problems like self-driving cars or quantum computing or AI breakthroughs uh, is really unique. Very cool. Thanks. So I really like this answer from Akshat. And because he really talked about Google and not about himself, which is really the key to this question. So specifically, Akshat brought up three points. One, which was about building for global, which is super important for Google because it's a global company. Second, which is building for scale, which is also a really hard problem. I mean, billions of users is a tough problem. And the third thing is actually solving really hard problems. 
um, which is a major problem that Google has at the scale it has for the global features it's trying to launch. Um, so this is a bit of a trick question. Um, it really asks why you want to work at Google, but think about how you can help solve Google's big problems. Okay, um, next. Tell me about a time you demonstrated product leadership. Hmm, great question. So on one of my previous teams, I was working on a messaging product. And that messaging product was having extreme reliability issues. That's to say, you know, messages just weren't sending, which is a pretty important feature of a messaging product. Um, they would either get lost or go to the wrong place. And the issue was that the core engine that was powering communication uh, was buggy. It had been brought in through an acquisition, and that code hadn't really been properly integrated. So the team that was responsible for this engine had been hard at work trying to fix bugs, but they really always felt like they were playing a game of whack-a-mole. And after you know, several months of working on the problem, we hadn't really seen a market improvement. This was really frustrating for leadership as well, who was, you know, blocking a number of important public launches until the messaging problem was fixed. So what I did is I decided to sort of jump in and spend 50% of my time working on these core reliability issues in addition to new feature work. It wasn't a glamorous job, but it was one that was important to the team. And after speaking with the engineering teams responsible for the uh, messaging infrastructure and sort of really pulling back the curtain on the problem, it became clear that they actually knew the solution all along. The solution was just to rewrite the entire engine, which had been brought in as the result of an acquisition of another product. But because they'd been feeling, feeling pressure from leadership to sort of deliver on an aggressive timeline, this, this option hadn't been exercised. So one thing that I did is I helped create a plan around completely rewriting this messaging engine. Um, I socialized that plan with leadership and ultimately got it approved and set up a plan for how we would deliver it. You know, a quarter and a half later, um, we started to see market improvements in messaging reliability. And what I learned from all of this is oftentimes the solution is known. It's really about setting up the setting the team up for success um, and making sure that the entire team is bought in on a plan of action. Very cool. I liked Akshat's answer here for three reasons. One is he made the problem really simple. Uh, he didn't make it complicated. It wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't have to understand another product. It was just really basic. Second, he used words like, this was not a glamorous product. This is great because it shows that you have grit as a product manager and sometimes the unsexy things are very valuable. And the third thing was his solution was very bold. Doing a rewrite is a pain in the neck. No one loves doing it, but often it's the right thing to do, especially in light of a failure. So again, it's a good answer. Simplicity, grit, uh, tough decision, uh, went to executive management and uh, got the problem solved. This is a good example of product leadership. Okay, uh, next question. Tell me about a time you solved a team conflict. Hmm. So when I was at my previous company, um, we had launched this experimental product called SkyPass. And SkyPass was like a digital vaccination passport. So this was during COVID and uh, it suddenly became important for people to be able to prove their test results or their COVID status in order to travel. So for about four or five months, we had launched SkyPass uh, and started dedicating you know, engineering, marketing resources to trying to get it off the ground. And it was not showing signs of traction. Unfortunately, it continued to be a big drain on resources. You know, case in point, there were features that I was trying to build that had to be deprioritized um, in favor of SkyPass. The issue was that SkyPass was sort of led by one key executive who was really personally invested on the, in the product. Um, but others across the team started to feel that this was no longer a good use of resources. This eventually led to sort of conflict and finger pointing and, you know, people getting defensive and their egos getting bruised. Um, it was clear that we needed to come up with some sort of plan to move forward on SkyPass uh, in a way that sort of involved the entire team. What I did is I came up with a set of criteria for running a proper experiment with, this, with, with SkyPass. I decided that we would come up with a set of criteria 
that after one quarter, if SkyPass hadn't hit, we would just we would wind the project down. The hard part was getting everyone bought in on this criteria. I worked really closely with the executives who had sponsored the project in the first place, as well as the engineering teams who felt that this project was a drain on time to come up with a set of experiment criteria and key KPIs that SkyPass would have to hit in a quarter. You know, a quarter and a half later, SkyPass had not hit those criteria and we did have to sunset the project. But now we had some objective data to back up our decision as well as the buy-in of the entire team. And so what I learned out of this is in times of conflict, it's really easy to fall back to finger pointing and say, you know, make assumptions about the merits of an idea or how well it was executed on. But it's really important to get everyone on the same page and sort of remind everyone that they're on the same team. It's also important to have objective sources of truth to navigate decision-making during these kind of emotionally complex times. Um, so that's what we did for SkyPass, and I think it worked well. Okay, nice. So this is a strong answer by Akshat. The, the basic fundamentals of this problem is that you want to set up a problem um, and show a solution and, and describe what you learned. So in this case, he set up a common objective. He described some criteria that he needed to meet. Then he executed on that and evaluated on it. And, and these are the core elements of this type of question. All right, last question. What makes a good product manager? I think from a behavioral standpoint, you know, a, a product manager needs to understand his or her market, the user, and more importantly, um, the company and the context in which they're operating. Right? A product manager is only as good as the team uh, that they can sort of set up for success and enable. And in order to get buy-in from your cross-functional peers, in order to make them successful, you need to deeply understand, you know, what their goals are, right? And um, like what their constraints are. Um, it's really important to empathize not just with your user, but also with the peers that you're working with and make sure that everyone is rowing in the same direction. And hand in hand with that, you know, high EQ is really important strong communication and conflict resolution skills. I mean, even in the two uh, anecdotes that we just went through, I think conflict resolution is so important because, you know, a, a demotivated team, no matter how smart they are, won't really get much done. And oftentimes it falls to the PM to make sure that morale is high and that people are working well together. So I loved this answer from Akshan because it really gets to the heart of being a good product manager at Google, specifically focusing on the user, the market, the company context from which you're operating in, right? He used words like empathize. He used words like having a high EQ. He used words like communication. Um, these are all kind of the critical skill sets of being a good product manager at Google. Okay, well, Akshat, that's the end of the interview. Congratulations, did an awesome job. And uh, I hope that was fun for you too. Definitely. I hope this interview has been helpful to everyone watching. Both Akshat and I are coaches on I Got an Offer. So if you have an interview coming up and you need help preparing, feel free to reach out and you can find us there. Thanks and good luck. Mm -hmm.